thank you. And tell us like, how do we trust our gut? What does that even mean? Get us started. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. First of all, I'm really excited to be here with you you. Um, I have actually shared the link for the slides in our chat for anybody that is joining via Zoom, but I will definitely share the link afterwards for anybody else that's interested. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, help you understand how to trust your gut. And so really what that means is using microbiome insights to improve your and your baby's health. Um, really quickly. Can you guys see my screen? There, perfect. So yeah. Amanda gave a little bit of my background. All of these letters pretty much mean I'm a nurse practitioner, um, a microbiome clinical specialist. And for the last 10 years, I've just been passionate about essentially integrating preventative primary care and research. And so I always think it's really fascinating how people get to where they are in their careers. And I'll tell you a bit about my personal background. I actually grew up with poor access to healthcare. And so the result of that is oftentimes on Medicaid, you're overprescribed antibiotics. By age 16, I had essentially wiped out all of the good bacteria that were in my gut. And those GI symptoms like diarrhea and cramping were just interfering with my daily life and ability to function. So I had to have a colonoscopy and that was really the tipping point for me where I recognized, whoa, everything that we're putting in our body is actually impacting the kind of bacteria that live in our guts. And I was just feeling it like the way that it was changing my vitality and my ability to think. And so I became determined to see how we can optimize these bacteria. And so for my PhD, I dove into how we can harness our gut microbes to essentially improve neurological, immune, and endocrine function um, to ultimately increase energy and improve lifelong health. So let's start by here. I'm trying to, you guys can see like everything on my slide, like yes. presentation. Perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, I've dropped my dissertation there if you guys need um, in the notes. So what is a microbiome? Does anybody know what that means like right off the bat? No, I'll admit it that I don't, but oh good, Rebecca does, but she's a dietitian. I feel like this is her world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so microbiome in short is essentially a modifiable army of a hundred trillion bacteria that we depend on to stay alive. They influence the way we eat, the way we think, and even the way we function. And so some of you guys may have experienced this firsthand if the COVID-19 isolation has been impacting what we call your gut brain health. So the reason for this is there's actually 10 times as many microbial cells as there are human cells in and on our bodies. What I'm gonna do today is present some of the research that demonstrates how these bacteria um, influence us and how we can actually make them work with us and for us. Um, we know that the latest research actually suggests these correct balance of microbes are really crucial for not only regulating our immune function, but performing essential functions like digesting food and even synthesizing vitamins. And so that's the microbiome. Uh, I'll shorten it to biome, like moving forward because it dropped a lot in this talk, provides some of the most important medical breakthroughs of our era. So for all the moms joining us um, in this talk, I want to just revisit how bacteria can actually improve your um, weight loss if, you're, if that's something that you need, enhance your sleep, um, improve your skin, your mental clarity, increase energy levels, and most importantly, reduce overall inflammation in your body. So a really fun fact is we used to think that DNA was what defined us. And what's crazy is now we know we're only 10% human DNA. The rest is really this bacteria that I'm talking about in the biome. So I thought I'd start with how is your microbiome formed? Um, this was my question when I started my dissertation in my PhD program. I really wanted to understand how does the bacteria get there and how can, what are the factors that we can control? 
to increase the good population that make us ultimately feel good. So I'm gonna run through all the factors right now that influence your bio. So the first one is your mom. This is kind of out of your control. Um, so right, right when you're like an embryo um, to fetal development, you're actually getting happy bacteria transmitted from your mom's placenta. So we call happy bacteria commensal. And I've listed some of the species, the phyla here. Um, they're really similar to our human oral biome. So a second factor that influences the kind of bacteria you have in your gut is gestational age. Again, this is something that's kind of out of our control, but we know the better, the longer you're in mom, the better. So full-term infants have a much more diverse gut biome, um, which is really positive and protective. And so I became curious as to find out how do we protect the babies that are born early? And I'll get to that in just a few slides. Um, another factor that influences our bacteria is mode of delivery. So how you actually came into the world. We know that um, there's two options, vagin vaginal birth versus C-section. And we know that a vaginal birth is actually awesome for our biomes. There's a lot of happy bacteria that live in the vaginal canal. And what we're finding now is best practice in hospitals if you have to have an emergency C-section, um, actually getting the doctor to smear the baby with the vaginal secretions is good. It's primitive. That's what you know nature has designed us to do. But no worries if you came into the world cesarean. I'm going to talk about things we can control in a minute. Getting the antibiotic use, I mentioned this about my upbringing and was overprescribed. The good news is that we can actually go ahead and modify like if some of our good bacteria was wiped out. And I'll talk about that in a few slides. But we do know that um, babies who, who even their moms had antibiotics had an increase in this gram negative bacteria, which can result in a systemic infections. Um, but we know sometimes that that's important, right? If you have an emergency C-section, you're going to be prescribed antibiotics. So what can you do to help your baby if that happens? And this is where feeding is like the most amazing thing. This is where I became fascinated with breast milk because it's what we can actually control for giving babies more breast milk if they're born early, if they're born via C-section, um, human milk is just amazing. It's like the first life vaccine and it has the nutrients that are necessary for the good bacteria to grow. Those are called the HMOs um, and they're broken down into short chain fatty acids. And what those do is actually continue to promote the growth of re two really good species of bacteria, bifidobacteria and lactobacillus. So between these good bacteria, um, there's also other things in human milk that reduce the risk of fatal infections like sepsis um, and other things that kill babies when they're born early. And this is called an immune protein called SIG-A. And so how this immune protein works is it actually goes and it talks to your gut lining, right? And it makes sure that the cells are nice and tight and that the gene expression is actually occurring properly, which I think is amazing. And we'll come back to these cell junctions in a couple of slides. Um, this really blew my mind. This was a fun fact is like breastfeeding itself is like nature's biofeedback. So what, what is happening is there's receptors in your milk ducts if you're breastfeeding right now that actually detect in your baby's saliva if they're unwell and then can adapt the antibodies that we, so some of them we talked about in the previous slide, the nutrients and the immune proteins that are in the milk to help the baby fight their illnesses more effectively, which I thought was like mind blowing. Um, so other things that actually influence our gut as we get a little older is environmental exposure. So the people that you're around, which is kind of crazy, right? So this study here showed that babies that were found in close proximity to each other actually had patient to patient transmission and had very similar um, gut profiles. So this one really blew my mind. So genetics, there was always this 
nature versus nurture argument, we were like, is the genetics telling what kind of bacteria um, to thrive essentially in our bodies? Um, but this was fascinating. So there was a longitudinal study that looked at twins that shared environmental and genetic factors. And so they were looking at not only the bacteria in the breast milk, but the changes that it made to the baby's gut. What we know is that, you know, sharing a genetic factors such as the same maternal biome um, and skin to skin contact and exposure to the same breast milk does cause there to be similar gut profiles, but environmental factors such as antibiotic exposure um, were actually more significant of community structure regardless of host genetics. Why is that good? Because that means that there's something we can do to change the kind of bacteria that actually influence the way that we function. And so in short, that was a lot of information. Definitely drop your questions in the chat and I'm excited to get to answer them at the end. Your 90% microbial DNA. In short, some are good, some are bad, some are harmless. The harmless bacteria are basically just along for the ride. They don't bother, um, we don't bother them and they don't bother us. What we know about the high risk bacteria is they do things like they cause disease, they bring down our mood, they even make us crave junk food and create the acid that actually rots our teeth if we don't brush. The high reward bacteria do really good things like digest our food, heal our bodies, and even keep bad bacteria and viruses at bay. So in short, everyone's biome is very unique to their environment nature and evolution have created many clever mechanisms for making sure it's passed on from one generation to the next. So what happens when we don't have the best bacteria, right? Um, this was a question that I wanted to figure out because we saw that preterm infants were really struggling with what is called dysbiosis. And at this point in time, the literature, the Oxford Dictionary said, it just means an imbalance in your your gut bacteria that contribute to a range of ill health. And I was curious, cause I'm like, this isn't really enough to diagnose um, patients with or babies with to, uh, we need a more standardized medical definition. And so part of my dissertation was actually creating that and looking at all the medical literature. And it turns out dysbiosis is actually characterized by one, a decreased diversity. So there's not a lot of kinds of bacteria present. We also see what's called a shift towards proteobacteria, which is a gram negative pathogenic organism that often leads to sepsis and, and infections. And we see inflammation and immune disruption. And so what happens when you have this perfect storm, these three factors that we call dysbiosis? Um, the consequences of that are inflammation, right? And so I mentioned the gut lining and how breast milk is really cool because it pretty much makes sure that that gut lining is intact and it's nice and tight. So you essentially have these junctions in your colon. What happens in dysbiosis is there's a widening of these junctions. So that means there's increased permeability and in what's inside your gut that's not supposed to pass, like the toxins, the live bacteria, undigested food can actually enter the bloodstream. And so this infects the entire health of whether you're an adult or an infant moving forward because it affects our immune response. And we see that there's more inflammatory and metabolic disorders that result when you have dysbiosis. Um, so immune dysfunction also occurs, and this is because our gut bacteria actually train our immune system how to function. So there's these things called B cells, and it impacts their memory. And B cells are really important, like right now during COVID, you want to make sure if you're ever exposed that your B cell remembers, right? So it can produce the same kind of antibody to fight that virus if you're ever exposed again. Um, what we do see is that when there is dysbiosis, there's more autoimmune diseases in children moving forward, allergies, and what we call neurodevelopmental effects like ADHD and autism. 
and I'm not saying this to scare you because there, are, it's just important to catch dysbiosis. And I want to reiterate the importance of having good bacteria because it is something that we can take control of. Um, this was really fascinating for me than the neurological effects. So pretty much since the human microbiome project began in 2008, they've been looking at what we call the gut brain access. And what this is, is it's the two way communication between your brain and between your gut bacteria. I have a lot of information in the slide if you want to look back and read it afterwards, but pretty much what we know is the bacteria signal your nervous system and that impacts the hormones and as well as your immune responses. Also what we know is that there's a relationship between different mood disorders and even um, as I mentioned, ADHD and schizophrenia, if there is really prolonged periods of dysbiosis. Um, what, we, what we see actually in mice gives us hope though, because we looked at mice that have a normal or happy gut bacteria, and we compared them to the rats that were having really hyperactive stress responses, right? Like their cortisol was through the roof. And when we actually change the gut bacteria in the mice, whether it be by fecal transplant, which is changing out the entire gut contents entirely, or whether it be by supplementing with a good bacteria like B. infantis, this led to a full reversal of the abnormal stress response. So I stress that because I think a lot of us can be, as I said, like feeling stressed, um, especially what's going on in the world right now. And so gut health can really help us take control over our mood and some anxiety that we may think we have absolutely um, no basis in how it started. But so you had you had mentioned in the last slide a fecal transplant. So what what even is a fecal transplant? Great question. So we discovered it by accident. Um, there was a patient that was, had a really serious gut infection and they essentially took out all of his colon contents, all his poop and put in a healthy person's. So this is a really extreme situation. It's not, it's not often used, but what they ended up finding was not only did he have less anxiety and depression afterwards, he lost like 30 pounds and it was because the contents of the healthy person's bacteria totally changed his vitality and his metabolism, actually. Um, but the great thing is that what we're seeing is we can, we don't have to take such extreme measures as a fecal transplant. We can actually identify the kind of bacteria in our gut and try to shift towards, a, towards supplementation with more positive strains that can do the same thing. So how would you do this, this supplementation? Like, do you work with a physician that gives you a supplement? Do like, would I do a fecal transplant? Like, how would that happen? Great question. So we do, and um, I have these resources a couple slides ahead, immunobiome analysis. So it's an at-home stool test that you get sent, and then you work with a physician or a microbiome specialist like myself. They tell you what that bacteria means and then give you insights in terms of how to change it, not just with diet, but maybe you need a tailored probiotic. So this is the cool thing is now we're learning how to actually rehab our gut. Um, remember like the short-term chain fatty acids we talked about, they actually repair those tight junctions and help heal leaky gut syndrome. So I, I mentioned all this because there's so much hope in terms of the therapeutics that we're going to in the coming up slides. So you're right on point. You're like, what do we do? How do we know what kind of bacteria is living inside of our colon? Exactly. I know that's, that's got to be what all the moms are thinking watching this because it feels a little bit frightful, but in a good way. So <laughs> yeah, this is the hopeful part. So there's tests that analyze exactly how much good, bad, and harmless bacteria you have. And it's really interesting. So there's unique microbiome types, just like we have blood types. Um, what do you do with this information? So these tests can be used to actually make recommendations. So um, if you're introducing foods to your infant and you want to know the best possible foods to feed them given their unique biome, or even if there is some sort of um, imbalance 
we can modify and create tailored probiotics that are specific to improving your health. So this is the exciting thing is what we can change. Um, so we mentioned uh, probiotics and breast milk is really important for building the healthy microbiome from the start. It's like nature's perfected system. And okay, if you're in Okay, so wait, so so I have a question for you because I'm sure people think it. So when you're saying breast milk, and I know I can see on Facebook that we have a couple of men that are watching. So when you say breast milk, you're talking about a baby drinking breast milk, or are you talking about an adult drinking breast milk to try to get their microbiomes in check? Because we know that that's something that adults do as well sometimes, especially bodybuilders, et cetera. So first three years of life. So like um, the World Health Organization, you know, recommends breastfeeding for at least two years. This is that critical window where we're really shaping the baby's um, signature biome moving forward. So I'm referring to the babies, breastfeeding your baby as long as possible. Yep. And once we're past that and we're introducing real foods or even into adulthood, I've actually listed some probiotic rich foods that are, can help improve digestion boost immunity and promote a healthy weight. So a lot of fermented foods are on here. Sauerkraut's one, um, that's that weird stuff in a bag that looks like it's floating around. It's fermented cabbage. <laughs> Kimchi is pretty similar. It's a spicier Korean version of that. Um, kefir is like a fermented um, liquid yogurt. Can be pretty tasty as a drink. Um, kombucha is pretty high in probiotics. We know um, miso, which is added to ramen often. Tempa is another one. Um, yogurts, hard cheeses, red wine even has probiotics, um, as well as Amaro. So if you're going to partake, these ones are actually have good properties for you, right? So Amaro has fermented bot botanicals that were actually originally used to improve digestion. So Lauren, how much of this should we be eating? So like, should I be having like a tablespoon of sauerkraut every day? Like how much should we be ingesting? Great question. So that's going to be unique to you based on the kind of bacteria that are living in your gut. These are just kind of catch all healthy foods. I would say if you're going to have um, the kimchi or the sauerkraut, a quarter of a cup is really important if you're going to be consistent with that. And then like eight ounces of kombucha, if you can. Um, I found that I actually needed to supplement with a custom probiotic for a little while. So this is what's really cool is um, you get this stool analysis sent to you. It's super easy to use. Um, you just take the, the package and the Q-tip, you pack up a tiny sample, you put it in a FedEx mailer, and then you find out can you trust your gut? <laughs> is, is it doing the best things for your immune performance? And so it's really simple three steps that we do is like one, identify that unique bacteria with the at-home stool analysis. Two, we review the results and look at your bacterial profile to see if you need a custom probiotic or if we can just work with you on tailored dietary insights. So what kind of foods, exactly your question, like how much of what should I be eating? And then we also start by setting a goal too. So if you're a mom and you're like, I just have had like a bubbly stomach and it's interfering with my sleep um, and my energy levels, we're gonna check back in three months and make sure that the health outcome you wanted to achieve, we actually attained it. Um, so for babies, we know that like fussiness can just, it's really hard to know what your baby is crying about, right? And so if you've tried everything, like making sure you have um, as much skin to skin as possible um, and you're breastfeeding, or if you've gotten to the point where you've introduced a bottle and making sure it doesn't have um, a lot of air, like the anti-colic valves are good. Um, this is something you may want to try just to see what your baby's gut bacteria look like. Um, what's actually included in the analysis is a 45 minute telehealth visit with a primary care provider. So that could be me or some of the other specialists that we work with. Um, this at home stool kit, you get personalized scores. But oftentimes I've had patients who, you know, just go and get a stool analysis and they're like, 
okay, great. But what does this data mean? So that's where actually having the one-on-one -on -one session with you and saying, okay, this is what's important. This is the kind of bacteria we want to increase in three months. Here's how you're going to do it. This is the exact amount of kefir you need to eat plus your custom tailored probiotic that you'll take for three months. Cool. Um, okay. So, so what you're saying is basically, so we get this kit, which, um, where do we get this kit just for those that are on Facebook live or can't stay till the end? Like, how do they get this kit to, and before you answer that, do they also get a kit for their child or their baby? Does it? Yes. Yeah, they, they can do it for their baby. They can do it for them. And even for fathers too, like we saw, like people in the same environment do share um, microbes. You go to the naturalnipple.com and it's called our immunobiome analysis. Also, it's included in the final slide, the link, if you're interested. Okay, so naturalnipple.com, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, so, so, so you get this kit, you put your poo-poo in it, and then you mail your poo-poo, and then you get back your results, and then you get a 45-minute session with you or somebody else that will help you actually figure out what to do with the results for you or for your child. Exactly. You nailed it. I'm going to be mailing in my poo-poo, Lauren, right? I'm gonna be <laughs> it's awesome. so interesting. Honestly, it's fun yeah. to see. It's fun to see, like, I think it's really cool when your baby's around six months old and you're starting to think about foods to introduce to just making sure it's tailored for your baby's unique needs, your babies. And, and we recommend it too, because it's fun to see your breastfeeding journey actually shaping and help improve the gut profile and making sure there's no dysbiosis present. Um, so for parents, this is cool as we've seen actually elimination in food sensitivities, like by increasing enzymes that actually help break down those foods. So think of your, your gut helps make your good bacteria make those. So your biome is kind of like a muscle that you can train how to respond. Um, we, we know it can help with colic as well, increasing the good bacteria by easing fussiness. Um, that's often related to some of those gram negative species like proteobacteria that can interfere with your baby's digestion and sleep. Um, so yeah, I've included here the link to actually, if they wanted to have that full immunobiome analysis that includes a meeting with a provider, the custom probiotic. And um, I've also included in here a synopsis. So this was a ton of information, but these slides um, have clickable references that you can always go back and take a look at. So thank you guys for learning with me. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, I think, well, it, it was very interesting. Thank you for giving us your time. I thought what was interesting about this is that so often the content that we do is really just about like your, your child or being a mom. What's interesting is this something that we can all use in our life, not just for our babies. Um, so I think that's super fascinating. So I have one question for you. And then we have a couple that I've been keeping track of between the app Facebook Live and Zoom. So then I'll ask you a couple that um, I've been keeping track of since you started. So what if you, so if you don't have a baby and if you want to do this stool sample um, test analysis, like if you're like a single guy or something, should they do it through the naturalnipple.com? Are you guys not the right place for them? And do they need to go somewhere else? They can absolutely order through the natural nipple. I have a second site that, you know, if you're you're just like not wanting to subscribe to nipple updates you can go to beyondbiome.life if you're a male and you just want to order it through there but it's still me shipping it out yes. um yeah. different branding we all know what that's like perfect okay so i put that in the chat as well just in case um but so i think it's really interesting i know that one of the questions that you got you got a couple of questions that were around um just like in general like let me hold on. There were two different places. Let me pull it up. So what kind of diet can you optimize on your gut health? But there was a lot of questions that were related to IBS. I saw two different ones. So like from your experience, if you're having things like, like IBS, what can we eat to make it better? Do we need to do the stool sample analysis? Yeah. Great question. So when I started with my story at 16, after that colonoscopy, IBS can be a really frustrating rule out condition. They're just like, oh, guess it's not ulcerative colitis. Good luck managing this. So that's what I was really curious about because my symptoms were 
IBS symptoms. And um, the stool analysis really helped me because I wasn't sure exactly what they give you really general advice, like no caffeine, no chocolate, no fried food, no greasy food. And I'm like, okay, great. But when I played with my diet a little bit, I'm like, caffeine doesn't actually bother me. And I love coffee and I'm going to continue to drink that. Um, Right. But I could have cut out a lot of the experimentation of the elimination diets just by getting to my data, right? Like these are the kind of... I, I want to rid some of this proteobacteria and it's essentially like real estate. Think, think of that. Like if you have bad bacteria taking up space in your colon, what we do is we do what's called a reset. If you're an adult at the beginning of the program, and it's like a three day cleanse to kind of wipe out all the contents of your stool. It's not fun. It's kind of like <laughs> your colonoscopy prep, but what that does is it leaves a clean slate in a neighborhood for you to lay down the good real estate and get the good bacteria in there. That, and that's what really helps with even women that are, you know, if you haven't conceived yet. Um, so I'm not a mom myself, but, you know, thinking about my fertility as I get older, it's really crucial that we keep our inflammation systemically just at bay, right? And the mediating your gut bacteria is a great way to do that. Okay, so let's, because I know some people think, so let's talk about those three days more. So how do we cleanse, um, you know, to give it good real estate? What does that really look like? (laughs) Um, When you sign up, I walk you through really tailored slides. Like you can call me if you're having problems pretty much day one. Um, So if you have ever done a colonoscopy, it's kind of like a clear liquids diet. So you're having teas, you're having lots of juices. Really the goal is to get to the point where you're pooping clear to be totally blunt. Um, So it's like, it's like a millennium fecal transplant, right? Without the surgery. (laughs) Very cool. Okay. And the second day you can act. Yeah. (laughs) I love this. Okay. All right. So, so, so that's one thing we can do to help. So then once we get to that point, so for people that have something like IBS, it sounds, I mean, I know the the point of this talk was not for you to like convert everybody to go do the stool um, analysis, but it sounds like for people, and I'm thinking about somebody, actually the woman, why our app exists, who's my best friend has had a lot of gut issues. And I'm actually thinking about her So like, it sounds like if you have something like IBS, it might be good to just do this. It sounds like you could really learn a lot from the process. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, like the point isn't to convert people, go run and buy this. It's just, it can be really frustrating when you're navigating the medical system as it stands and you're kind of left without answers, right? Like, and if if you're not getting to the root of the problem, it can be like, this is a really non-invasive way to find out like, is this the root of the baby's colic and fussiness? Is this the root of, you know, my lack of energy and what they call like leaky gut syndrome? Is this actually kind of influencing my anxiety? I I love this because it gives us a tool that's totally non-invasive, right? Like if we can change our diet, if we can change our lifestyle a bit and actually just change the gut bacteria and have these benefits without getting on tons of medications that you're going to be relying on. I think that's a great tool. So I just want to make the resource available for people. I think it's so cool. So when do you recommend, like if, um, if you had a baby tomorrow, when would you do this for your baby? Great question. I would actually do it only if they were having problems, if they're under six months old, to be totally honest, just keep trying to breastfeed. If I had to give up breastfeeding prior to six months, I would actually do the test then because this can result in you getting a custom supplement for your baby's probiotic. So if you started introducing formula, you definitely want to get that good bacteria there, right? We know not everyone can make it to the two years of breastfeeding. So that's where I would recommend doing the analysis. And then once you start introducing solid food, just so you know the kind that are specific to your baby's needs. It's so interesting. I love that. So, okay. So let's talk about, so we have about four minutes left and it's 1245. So um, let's answer a couple more quick questions. So you had I mentioned. I actually have a question too. Oh, yeah. Can tell me. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So I'm not a mom yet, but I have a very similar story to you with IBS and like struggles with that. And I've never, I've had the whole colonoscopy 
thing, um, yeah. but I've never had this kind of test before, but I, is it a thing? Does it impact my future child that I possibly have like lost some bacteria, am experiencing dysbiosis, that kind of thing? That's a really good question. So this is like, I'm going to give a two part answer, like one, just for your overall potential fertility. This is why I think it's important because when we talk about how it mediates systemic inflammation, being able to conceive a lot of that is dependent on how much inflammation is in your body. Mm -hmm. So then once you actually get pregnant, it is important to have the healthiest biome possible because we when we go back to how it's formed, right? It's actually like going from your bacteria that are in your body in utero to right. your baby. Um, yeah, so that's a really great way to prepare for like in your breastfeeding um, journey and even in your pregnancy to correct if there is any imbalance and try to increase the amount of good bacteria that you have, if that answers your question. It does help, thank you. Yeah. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, and I bet there's a lot of people that are actually, I know somebody on Facebook was, um, has had some issues and she was wondering about it transferring to her baby's gut. So, um, okay, so speaking about babies and transferring. So we know whether it's a C-section or whether it's vaginal, that the vaginal juices are really good for the babies when it comes to bacteria. So there's yeah. been um, chatting actually recently on the app and I was curious like what an expert like your answer would be, but is it okay for the baby to have a bath right after they're born or should like, for how long should you be postponing the first bath um, so that you can get all that good, that good bacteria? Great question. So I would say at least you want eight hours of just like skin to skin with your baby, like colonizing that initial biome. And for our Facebook um, viewer, in terms of, in terms of like, if you're having gut problems and you're breastfeeding, don't be, don't be scared to continue breastfeeding because still the data that we see is it is so far superior. Like you're still giving your baby like those tailored immune proteins that they need. And there still is beneficial bacteria um, in your milk. So don't let that deter you if you have IBS from continuing to breastfeed. Yeah. Lauren and I have done other sessions together and we didn't really go into that um, today, but like in general, when it comes to breastfeeding, it really is like a gift on this earth. Like I can't describe how amazing breastfeeding is. So if you are struggling with breastfeeding, don't let anything deter you. If you made the choice not to breastfeed, we understand that. But if you're struggling, if you need help, please come to the app, post a question onto forms and one of our experts will get back to you and they will help you. Um, we have lots of lactation experts on our app and we're here to help you women like Lauren are sitting there. So we don't want to see anybody quitting breastfeeding that doesn't want to because breast milk itself really is a miracle. Um, and we, we have other sessions on that. So everyone's welcome to personally write to me in the app. I can send you some really great panels we've done with people like Lauren. So since we're talking about breastfeeding, I don't, I want to make sure that we touch this before we leave. Tell us about the natural nipple. I think it's incredible, but for people that don't know what it is, tell us more about it and why you started it and what it is. Yeah, thanks so much. So I delved into my research and what got me started. And so actually, even though I'm not a mom, when I was trying to figure out how can we prevent those preterm infants from dying early? How can we correct dysbiosis? And when I realized that the one thing we can actually control is increasing the amount of breast milk those babies get, I was like, how can we make this happen? Like, what's the barrier to that? So um, I received some funding from the National Science Foundation. Bottom line is like standard bottles. I've, I've tested all of them now. They are not similar to our breast. <laughs> Shape yeah. and flow is just not similar. Um, no company had ever averaged maternal lactation over the first year and tried to match it in a product. So I'm developing the infant feeding system called the natural nipple, and it's really designed to eliminate that number one barrier that women said, which was like nipple frustration, right? Like after they give a bottle, oftentimes the baby just gets used to that faster flow and doesn't want to come back to breast or vice versa. And so if you go to my site to actually order one of these kits, you can also be signed up for updates. 
super excited because we're um, going to be beta testing with a group of moms. We actually have our prototypes arriving this week. So it's, it's really exciting. Congratulations. Well, I think it's amazing. And for anyone, um, follow the natural nipple because even if her product's not out yet, you can get on waiting lists and her Instagram page in general sells, sends just really good positive messages about breastfeeding, cool events that are happening with breastfeeding. The natural nipple also has experts that do sessions, um, which is really great. And then again, you can join Social Mama and you can always find Lauren and other experts like her. Um, we love having you in our circle, Lauren. Thank you. I love being on Social Mama. Seriously, I'm sure you guys, if you're watching, you're already on the app. But any questions you have, it's a really great place to get that advice for medical experts and get the support that you need. 96% of women right now said they feel like they need more support from the community and from healthcare providers. So Social Mama is really doing both. Thank you. You're so sweet. We really appreciate it. And we will publish this to our page and we will share it on the app. So if you're not on the social media app, come to the app store or Google play for free and you can find Lauren and this replay of the video. So thank you so much, Lauren. We appreciate it. Thanks. I had so much fun. You guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.